today we will discuss the labetalol this labetalol is a third generation non selective beta blocker with additional vasodilator property as you can see the name of labetalol l a b e t a l o l l o l suffix means it's a beta blocker but why there is a a this a is because of it has additional alpha blocking property and that's why there is a labetalol a lol right so it's a third generation non selective beta blocker with additional vasodilator property it is a competitive antagonist at both alpha and beta receptor it is a competitive antagonist at both alpha and beta receptor and that's why it is called as alpha beta antagonist or alpha beta uh, receptor blockade alpha beta antagonist is the labetalol because it will going to act on alpha receptors as well as on the beta receptors and the one good thing about this labetalol or unique property it has four optical isomers it has four optical isomers like it is a good example of drug having racemic mixture it is a good example of drug having racemic mixture that means it has four optical isomers like rr rs sr and ss so this rs optical isomer is devoid of any alpha and beta blocking effect means no alpha and beta blocking effect in this rs isomer okay so this labetalol is a good example of a drug having racemic mixture with various pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic properties now what are the various actions actions of this labetalol selective blockade of alpha 1 receptor there is a selective blockade of alpha 1 receptor then it will also going to block the beta 1 and beta 2 receptor and it has a partial agonistic activity at the beta 2 receptor also partial agonistic activity at beta 2 receptor and there is a inhibition of neuronal uptake of noradrenaline inhibition of neuronal uptake of noradrenaline and additional direct vasodilator action additional vasodilator action so all these are the various actions of labetalol we will see in detail now alpha blocking potency beta blocking potency means it has alpha blocking effect but if you compare this alpha blocking potency with phentolamine it is 1/10th if you compare alpha blocking potency of labetalol with phentolamine it is 1/10th to phentolamine beta blocking potency is 1/3 to the propanolol now when there is a blockade of alpha 1 receptor alpha 1 receptor blockade that may lead to arteriolar vasodilatation or vasodilatation and this arteriolar vasodilatation is prominently seen in the standing position is prominently seen in standing position and partial beta 2 agonistic activity partial beta 2 agonistic activity is also responsible for this arteriolar vasodilatation right now we will see the actions in detail actions in detail as you can see here labetalol it's a non selective means it will going to act on alpha blocker beta blocker labetalol it's a alpha beta agonist and sorry it's a alpha beta antagonist so by acting on alpha 1 receptors it's alpha 1 blocker so by acting on alpha receptor now alpha receptors are present on the vascular smooth muscle systemic vascular smooth muscle 
So this labetalol by inhibiting these alpha blockers, it will cause vasodilatation. And if it causes vasodilatation, that means it will reduce the peripheral resistance. If it reduces the peripheral resistance, that means it will decrease the cardiac workload. And that's how it will increase the cardiac efficiency. By decreasing workload, it will increase the cardiac efficiency. Right? Now, labetalol is a non-selective beta blocker. That means it will going to act on beta 1 and beta 2 receptor. Beta 1 receptors are present on the heart. If it blocks the beta 1 receptor, that means it will decrease the rate of force of contraction as well as heart rate. It will decrease the heart rate and force of contraction and ultimately it will decrease the cardiac output and it will decrease the cardiac workload. Then by acting on beta 2 receptors, these beta 2 receptors where they are present on the vascular smooth muscles. But these beta 2 receptors mainly they are present on the liver and splanchnic blood vessels not on the systemic by inhibiting these beta 2 receptors on the uh, liver or splanchnic blood vessels it will cause vasoconstriction now if you are saying if it causes vasoconstriction then how it will going to effective as an antihypertensive because this beta 2 action is not that much effective or it is not that predominant action because this inhibition of beta 2 receptor this vascular smooth muscles particularly on the liver and splanchnic vessels right liver and splanchnic vessels prominent actions of labetalol is because of the beta 1 receptors which is present on the heart and alpha 1 receptors which are present on the vascular smooth muscles so it causes vasodilatation and that's how it will decrease the peripheral resistance this beta 1 receptor by blocking beta 1 receptor it will decrease the heart rate force of contraction and that's how it will decrease the cardiac output that means by decreasing peripheral resistance and cardiac output it will decrease the cardiac workload and that's how it increases the cardiac efficiency now at a molecular level what happens action on the heart action on the heart there is a cardiac muscle on this cardiac muscle there is a presence of beta 1 receptor on the cardiac muscle there is a presence of beta 1 receptor now these beta 1 receptors are stimulated by the norepinephrine norepinephrine or noradrenaline so this noradrenaline will stimulate this beta 1 receptors which are present on the cardiac smooth muscles now this cardiac smooth muscles beta 1 receptor this beta 1 receptor is a g protein coupled receptor and this beta 1 receptor which is g protein coupled receptor having three different subunits like alpha beta and gamma right g protein coupled receptor is having three different subunits like alpha beta and gamma now this alpha subunit is a stimulatory in nature so this adenyl cyclase with the help of adenyl cyclase ATP is converted into cyclic AMP with the help of this adenyl cyclase this adenyl cyclase get activated which is attached to this alpha 1 subunit and this alpha 1 subunit is a stimulatory in nature so it will this adenyl cyclase will stimulate alpha 1 subunit and it will convert ATP into the cyclic AMP and this cyclic AMP is a secondary messenger so it will stimulate the enzyme protein kinase A when it stimulates the enzyme protein kinase A, it will increase the intracellular calcium level in the cardiac muscle. It will increase the intracellular calcium level in the cardiac muscle. And what does it do? It will remove that troponin between which is present in between actin and myosin. How it will remove troponin which is present in between actin and myosin? Because there is a formation of calcium troponin complex. So it will remove that troponin which is present in between actin and myosin filament and that's how there is a sliding of actin myosin filament. There is a sliding of actin myosin filament and there is a contraction of the cardiac muscle. There is a contraction of the cardiac muscle. 
this is the action of norepinephrine on the beta 1 receptor but when we give this labetalol it will going to inhibit the action of norepinephrine it will going to in inhibit the action of norepinephrine on the beta 1 receptors so that's how it will reduce the that's how it will reduce the heart rate and force of contraction and ultimately it will reduce the cardiac output right now now where we can use this labetalol all these properties are helpful in reducing blood pressure in reducing blood pressure in patients with essential hypertension chronic essential hypertension blood pressure in patients with essential hypertension or you can give as an alternative to the alpha methyl dopa for the hypertension during pregnancy by the oral route it is given as an alternative to the alpha methyl dopa for hypertension during pregnancy or pregnancy induced hypertension by oral route then it is also given in a severe hypertension or hypertensive emergency or we can say hypertensive crisis due to pheochromocytoma as an alternative to the phentolamine or as an alternative to the phenoxybenzamine now pharmacokinetic properties oral absorption is complete oral bioavailability is 20 to 40% because of extensive first pass metabolism simultaneous food intake increases the bioavailability simultaneous food intake increases the bioavailability it will rapidly and extensively metabolize in the liver by the oxidation and glucuronide conjugation very small amount is excreted in the urine plasma t half is just 8 hours right now what are the doses orally it can start with the 50 mg twice a day you can increase the dose up to 100 to 200 mg thrice a day if required parenterally it is given 20 to 80 mg intravenously bolus every 10 minute parenterally 20 to 80 mg intravenously bolus every 10 minute or if you want to give as an IV infusion then 0.5 to 2 mg per minute till BP is controlled now what are the side effects or adverse effects of this drug there is a lightheadedness headache orthostatic hypotension bradycardia all because of the this orthostatic hypotension headache because of the alpha 1 blocking action now because of the beta 1 blocking action there is a bradycardia cold extremities dizziness vertigo general side effects like nausea vomiting diarrhea hepatitis tiredness fatigue so all these are the common side effects of labetalol now in this category there is one more drug that is called as the carvedilol now what is this carvedilol carvedilol is present as a separate entity that is alpha beta blockade means it has beta 1 beta 2 and alpha blocking action it has beta 1 beta 2 and alpha blocking action it causes vasodilatation because there is alpha blocking effect calcium blocking effect and because of its antioxidant action it causes vasodilatation oral bioavailability is 30 percent plasma protein binding is 98 percent it will get extensively metabolized in the liver plasma t half is 6 to 8 hours less amount excreted in the urine now where it is indicated this la this carvedilol it was the first beta blocker which is approved by the us fda for the heart failure or congestive cardiac failure it is also used in hypertension angina myocardial infarction left ventricle failure right dose is 12.5 mg orally you can increase the dose up to 50 mg daily in congestive heart failure a low dose is given 6.25 mg daily now adverse effects like fatigue bradycardia hypotension nausea vomiting diarrhea arthralgia most of the adverse effects are same as like the labetalol so this carvedilol is also a commonly used drug for the hypertension angina mi or left ventricle failure and it was the first beta blocker approved by US FDA for the heart failure patients.